Uh, I'm here at the Freedom Pay block uh, with James Pepper, who is CEO of Vista. James, thanks for joining. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. So, Freedom Pay and Vista go go back a long ways, uh, which in this world is about four years, <laughs> I think, something like that. Four years plus the pandemic. I right, think, plus yeah. the pandemic. Yeah. So everything changed then, but. Um, that actually equals a lifetime in the world of payments, especially over, over the course of the pandemic and the radical changes that, that we've seen there. I wanted to talk with you a little bit about your evolution um, and the, some of the changes you've seen over the past, say, 25 years that you've been doing what you're doing. Yeah, and so there's, there's been so many changes in that time. You know, when, when Vista first was founded back in the late 90s, um, we most of our customers had like ROM based cash register systems, you know, so, uh, uh, um, you know, heavy, heavy bits of machinery that were basically sort of calculating, you know, calculators with a cash drawer on them. So, um, so yeah, we've come a, an awful long way. And, and I think, you know, the, the evolution probably went through uh, where scanning, uh, uh, scanning sort of came into the, the world of, of retail, PLUs and all of those sort of things. And then more recently, there was the emergence of, of sort of uh, self-checkout and, and, uh, and other sort of technologies that are in store. But that, that's all been accelerated by the pandemic where you know, people didn't want to go into stores and maybe wanted to serve themselves on the, on the outside of stores. And uh, right through to sort of people want to drive through and, and pick up food and, and mm -hmm. things like that. So, so we've really evolved to, to support everything that's within a physical retail store. But, but also, we're now supporting the distribution centers, the dark stores, and all of these sort of things that support online retail. Because without which, you, you, you just have no global view of stock as a retailer. So, because of the nature of what you do, <clears throat> I mean, there's, there's a strong sentiment in this world that if you really want to know what's going on, <clears throat> you ask the people who are in charge of implementations. Because you see, the technologies, you see the people who are implementing the technologies, you see the users of them, the entire ecosystem. So really interested to see, to hear what your thoughts might be uh, on the acceleration in terms of speed that the pandemic offered us. But it wasn't just a, a function of speed, it seems to have been a function of entirely new expectations for how to be convenient to a customer's expectations. It's, it's a really good question, right? Because if you would have sort of said to some futurist um, back in 2019, you know, what's the next thing for retail technology? They would have given you a whole list of things. Um, some of those would have come true. Some of them would have been miles off, you know, because what happened is basically more people were at home, more people were shopping at home, but those physical retailers still wanted to get to that, that party and find new ways to, to sell to their customers that could no longer visit the stores. So it was about um, it was about sort of creating that sort of global view of all of their stock across the across their businesses and being able to get it to their customers when they required it. So online you know had a huge spike in, in terms of transactions but also the num it, certainly in the UK the number of people that fulfilled orders from the physical stores but the journey started online those sort of things. So, so, so where there's retailers that weren't connected and didn't have a, a true omni-channel solution, they, you know, literally they had to rush to put things in place during that pandemic. And I think you'll see a lot of people here at the show today are businesses that have emerged from the pandemic or, or were created as a result of the, 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 the pandemic and a need to change the retail environment. So I know that uh, a couple of years ago we were just talking about NRF and uh, I think the last physical NRF I was I attended, uh, the the theme of the moment seemed to be BOPIS, B O P I S, you know, buy, in, buy online, pay in store, yeah. which was a really interesting series of technologies that needed to be connected, and it seemed like uh, there was going to be probably a wave of adoption there, but but pretty soon, like within the next say nine months, that became a, a critical component really quickly was no longer just a function of, hey, this is a cool way that we can sell and service customers. It was table stakes. Yeah. Because if you don't have that, you know, you're, you've lost your competitive balance and everything. So uh, aside from BOPIS, which was the theme of the moment right now, and, and we'll see some of this in the show today, but what are some other technology themes that you're seeing emerge that retailers should be paying attention to? 
So, so I think I think a lot of um, a lot of people were talking about clouds and you know cloud applications and and, and um, moving away from sort of the, the fat stack of, of, of applications that you have within store. I think um, we didn't have the connectivity certainly in the UK across uh, across all retailers, and still there's some struggle today. Um, so I think a big a big sort of um, push has been to get that connectivity so that you can sort of have more uh, lightweight applications in store, um, more functionality in, in those um, in, in store as well. But also, I think a lot of, a lot of businesses were, were running uh, multiple channels but trying to make them look like they were one channel. And, and, and having those partnerships and having, you know, because not everybody is the expert on everything. So having partnerships in place to basically say, well, these guys are the experts in this area. These guys are the experts in there. If we can get these to work together and, and do it quickly, we can effectively make this a much better uh, customer journey. And I think that's that's been the major sort of development that, that we're seeing certainly at the show today as well. It seems like the light bulb was forced to go off yeah. for a lot of retailers. And I wanted to ask you a little bit about that. Uh, since you deal with so many implementations across so many different sectors, do you see any commonalities uh, between the people, the organizations that are ready and willing to adopt these new technologies versus ones that maybe just are a little bit slow to understand the, the critical nature of them. I think there's, there's been um, there's been a, a groundswell of change, really. Whereas maybe people in retail organisations may not have been listened to about what needed to change, because because there's not a direct sort of conversion to pound notes, if you like, you know, or pounds, yeah. So. Um, I, I think what, what, what has happened over, over this period of time is, is maybe they've been listened to and, and people have come to them and said, right guys, how are we going to make this, how are we going to do what this, this business does? How are we going to, how are we going to sort of mobilize our, our product, if you like, and, and, and take it to the market when doors are shut or customers don't want to come in to the physical store? You know, we we are seeing that people are returning to, to those physical stores now. So they you know they have missed the experience as well. You know, and and you don't get that experience online. You know, and and I think you know when when you sort of look at sort of payments and you look at an in store, there's a similarity with delays. If you get to, if you go to a store and you like something and you want to buy it, you've thought about it, you take it to the counter. If you get a delay at the counter, there's there's this dwell time that if it's too long, you'll put it back, yeah? In store, you might stay a couple of minutes waiting. Online, it's seconds, yeah? So I, I think there's some stats that uh, uh, Statista has published that 24% of, of, um, uh, of online tra transactions uh, carts are abandoned on the basis of the payment process is too slow or they're worried about the security of the payment process. So if you think about it, 24% of all sales going through your world, it's huge. Yeah, and there's many other reasons for abandonment, but 24% is, is a big standout sort of figure. Yeah, so a lot of, a lot of headroom there, a yeah. lot of opportunity, just to shore that up. I know, as, as we've said, uh, you're a, an integrated partner and a good family friend with, uh, with Freedom Pay. That partnership is, is uh, developing all kinds of new opportunities for all kinds of merchants in this area. Um, there's a lot of talk now about partnerships becoming a more integral part of retail operations and specifically retail technology operations. Can you speak to how you see partnerships evolving in this space? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, think, I think there's, there's that sort of uh, scenario where not everyone will have the expertise to deliver the end-to-end. -end. And, and if you take the best of, of all of these uh, partners' uh, offerings and you basically bring them together in one solution for the customer, it can solve so many of their real world problems they actually have. So it, what I, what I, when I first met uh, the team at, at Freedom Pay, what I was really taken by was the, the, the integration between payments and loyalty so that so you could take a retailer's loyalty solution uh, and basically integrate it as a form of payment through, through the system. Um, and where that's now evolved is, is you've got this data analytics, uh, data analytics platform. You're collating the data and you're sharing those insights which are really meaningful for, for the retailers. So I think all of those things have been developed through partnerships either via 
um, uh, there's, there's a relationship with a certain um, hospitality business, um, a leisure business, etc. And they are looking for a, a solution to a problem. You've then sort of pulling these people together to say, well, if the problem is implementation, we'll, we'll talk to Vista. But we'll do it as part of the partnership with, with, with Freedom Pay. If, if there's a problem with um, processing, well, we'll talk to one of our experts within that field, within Freedom Pay, or one of the partners that are, are sort of involved in the ecosystem. So partnerships are really key because otherwise you, you just have one element of it of, of a, a solution, whereas you're bringing everything together and it, you find every retailer has something different about their operation. Even though they still sell things, they might have a different customer dynamic, they might have a different um, a methodology, the way they're selling, and, and they might have a different strategy on some of these things as well. So it's really important to in, ensure the customer is part of that partnership as well. So if you could, if you had the, the pulpit, so to speak, <clears throat> and were able to offer retailers one bit of advice that you see basically from your perspective, from what you do, what would that bit of advice be? I, I think just be, don't be drawn into one product fits the whole, the whole solution. Have a look at, at what, what their challenge is first of all, understand where do they want to be this year, because that's the key thing, you know, making a difference now. How quickly can they, they go to market with, with these changes? But also looking about what's it going to be like in three years? What's it going to be like in five years? Some of these things we can't quantify yet, but things may change. You know, we're looking at things like digital currencies, but you know, when you talk, start talking about um, NFTs and things like that, you know, that's a whole world of problems that somebody's going to have to navigate through when... Yeah, when the next generation comes to us, say, "Well, I, I want to pay with this image, please." You know, it's like, how do we, how do we sort of manage that? You know, so I think, I think, it, you know, retailers will continue to evolve. They, they've always managed. They've always fought their way through whatever's been thrown at them. I think the key thing for them now is to, to really sort of engage with, with partners uh, such as, as Freedom Pay and, and basically bring the problems and, and work with us on the solutions. Well, I really appreciate your time. I, I know you're busy. I'll try and be kind to your schedule. But um, uh, James, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thank you very much. Really, really appreciate it. it. Thank you. And uh, I'll invite anybody who's watching to uh, join us at uh, 11.45 for the next interview. Uh, stay tuned from the uh, Retail Technology Show 2022 in London. Imagine a world where loyalty points from rewards programs can be redeemed around the world at select merchant locations, in airports, sports stadiums, restaurants, retail shops, and convenient quick-serve restaurants wherever your customers frequent. Global leaders in hospitality and lodging are now redefining the consumer experience with a points exchange program like no other. Introducing Freedom Pay's Earn and Burn multi-merchant network where rewards members are now able to travel, shop, dine and cheer on their favourite sports teams while earning and spending their rewards points. Expanding beyond your hospitality properties, rewards are now redeemable at many of the finest merchants throughout the world. Members will have the utmost flexibility in payment options as well as the ability to use their mobile app or with QR code efficiency. Reward members can now link Visa or any registered credit card to their rewards profile and be presented with the option of paying with points or local currency. And all of this is happening in real time. Once a purchase is made, the member's account will immediately be updated, reflecting a new points balance and a record where points have been accrued or redeemed with time, date and location. The security benefits cannot be overlooked. Every transaction will be protected by PCI validated point-to-point -point encryption and fully tokenized while abiding by member protection laws such as GDPR. All lodging and merchant locations will be secured by Freedom Pay, the highest level of security available today. Together, your hospitality properties and Freedom Pay will bring an unparalleled, frictionless rewards redemption program to an industry built on innovation.
With Freedom Pay's global consumer-centric platform, your property will be connected with the top retail brands internationally, bringing enormous value to an already successful rewards program. On behalf of your rewards members, Freedom Pay is working to make payments faster, simpler, safer, and smarter.